All right, let's look at our setup here, which is looks a little extensive, but it's not bad. DC motor, H bridge. I've already discussed that. This is one of my pulse width modulated controlled constant current sources, which can be used also as a switched power supply. And what we have on the board here, if you look, and I'll zoom in on the board and the motor in a moment, is an 8-pin microchip PIC 12F683. has only 8 pins, 6 I.O. pins, but microchip PICs can do amazing things. And I think they do a lot more than an Arduino, and you can really learn some electronics. Most of you, many of you have visited my channel. Know uh, about my video and pages on using the K150 programmer. I'll explain that in a little more detail. It can be used for in-circuit programming. This is an XGSU, I think that's how they pronounce it in Asian. This is a sophisticated programmer that will program anything. EEPROMs, EEPROMs, microchip picks, you name it. This is also connected through five connections for in-circuit programming. So I don't have to sit around plugging the chip in and out, which is what I did initially, until I learned how to do it in-circuit. And we will be discussing not only how to program in circuit for both of these programmers because it's identical, we will be discussing the microchip pick in a way that nobody else has. So let's run through the demo and let me, and get to it. All right, let's take a closer look at my prototyping setup. This is a DC motor, of course. The power supplies and are off to the side. Here's your H bridge circuit. Here are three optocouplers and three LEDs. Those are set up like I had with an Arduino project earlier. Here is my 8 pin 12F683 microchip pick and three associated switches. I have three inputs, three outputs. We'll look into using this pot for pulse width modulation control later on. Let's watch it run. Each switch, when I press it, will toggle on and off an LED and optocoupler that's either connected to one side of the H bridge or to the power supply. Nothing happens with either motor switch on unless I have the power enable switch and you see the motor run. Notice something when I cut it off. You notice that the motor jumps. That's the braking action from the H bridge. Reverse direction, same deal. Watch what happens though when I just cut the power off and disregard the braking action in the H bridge. It just runs down and quits spinning eventually. All right, let's look at this demo briefly. Of course, you see you see an LCD display. Once again, I'm using a PIC 12F683. These parts here are not used. That part is a PIC 16F73. I just stuck it there. I salvaged it out of this industrial board that was thrown away. What I have here is a couple of 
PCF8574P GPIO expanders. I covered those in another video with Arduino. There is an I2C mode in the PIC 12, uh, 12F683. And this particular chip, I could hook up as many as seven, I think. I also use this with the MCP 2000, I think it's 216, whatever it was. That's a 16 pin GPIO chip. This one's eight. Easy to hook up and connect. The total program for this to operate this LCD display was, I think, 200 bytes. All right, here's a little different demo, actually two of them. This is a 60 hertz oscillator. They used to put these in VCRs years ago. You can't get that part anymore. It's obsolete, but I had a few that put out a nice 60 hertz square wave. This is a PIC um, 16F84A, and this is a PIC 16F57. Both are counting because they have external clocks in, and using this 60 hertz oscillators and both of their internal timers, which are identical, and you'll note something with PIC chips, what you have in the lower end chips, such as these, also exists for the most part in the upper end chips. So if you learn timer zero on this and this, you'll be able to use it in the more advanced chips. One interesting thing I found with this, and I, when I was working with it, I unplugged this, and I was sort of wondering, well, how is it keeping counting if I don't have any input? Because I had a longer wire stuck on it, such as I do here, I'm just hanging a wire. It is actually picking up the 60 hertz AC field from the fluorescent light that I'm using to light this up. And the Smith trigger input cleans it up, and it's using it to count. And so you could use your power line, just a wire hanging in the air, to count at 1 hertz if you put the appropriate values into the timer. Yeah, I was pretty interested. I was... When I first saw that, I thought, okay, something's screwy here. I must have misprogrammed it. Nope. I was rather surprised with it. All right, let's discuss how to pro what we're going to be programming. Uh, you have the option of using PIC Basic Pro. As you can see here, it's pricey. Uh, you have the gold edition, and it'll set you back $270. The silver, that will set you back $119. And you have the student edition here, which will set you back nothing. You can download it, install it. You have to register it. I will only be using the student edition. And for the chips that it doesn't cover, and let's see what it covers. Here is a list, depending on what you get. The student edition only covers these devices. I have 690s. I have the 683. Uh, and then you can see the silver doesn't cover even half of what the gold does. That's a lot of different devices. Well, let's examine a few pick chips. Here is the PIC 12F683 that I use. Six. It is an 8-pin device, has a ground, has a plus 5. It has an internal oscillator, so you don't need a crystal. And it has 2048 bytes of flash, 128 SRAM, 256 of EEPROM, 6 I.O. pins. It has 4 10-bit analog-to-digital converters one comparator, and two 8-bit and one 16-bit timer. 
a step up from the 83, which unfortunately is not covered by the PIC Basic Pro Student Edition, is the 628A. I have several of those. 2048 bytes of flash, 224 SRAM, 128 bytes of EEPROM, 16 IO, one pulse width modulation out. Um, the 83 has a one PWM out as well. This has a serial a serial port hardware, two comparators, and, and a 2 8 and 1 16 bit timer, but it has no analog to digital converters. The next device is where I, the one that I showed is the six, PIC 16F57. We will be doing this one in assembly. It is a very, very basic device, has no, very few hardware modules, only a 8-bit timer and an 8-bit prescaler, but it has a whopping 20 I.O. pins. These things cost about a buck fifty a piece. 72 bytes of SRAM and 2048 bytes of flash. No interrupts or pull-ups, which is what both of these have, interrupts and pull-ups and no timer zero flag that will be ex explained later this is the PIC 16F84A same size and connections for the uh, 628A that I mentioned earlier difference is the 628A has an internal os RC oscillator you need an external crystal for the PIC 16F84A uh, it has half the SRAM, 1,024 bytes of, SRAM, of flash, compared to the 628 and uh, 683. And here's the specifications here. But both of these have uh, nearly identical interrupt control structures. Um, the, 16, the 84A has a single 8-bit timer and both have uh, internal programmable pull-ups. Um, pull this is the PIC 16F 690. This has lots of hardware modules. Uh, 4K of uh, flash, 256 bytes of SRAM, 256 EEPROM, 18 I.O. pins, <clears throat> 10, a 12 10-bit analog to digital converters, two comparators, uh, two 8-bit and one 16-bit timer, and yes, it has serial port and other hardware built in. While these things can be done in software, <clears throat> excuse me, it's much better to use the installed hardware. This will work on the uh, PIC Basic Pro Student Edition. Here is a typical connection on my XGSU programmer. You can see there's the program data, program clock, and the VPP master clear. You can see, for instance, here that's the pro. That's the program data. That's the program clock. The master clear would have connected here. It connects identically on the 84A. This is the PCF 8574P. Extremely simple to use and set up and cheap. Here is a schematic to the 12F683 that we will be exploring. If you look at the LEDs, they are the optocoupler. There's optocouplers connected in series, like it is down here. And you would have three switches instead of this pot. Here's the schematic for the 8574P connected to the LCD display, very simple connections, simple to program.
and that's this introduction we'll be looking at next we'll be looking at programming and how to and I will make you pre-made templates that you can download to get you started and I'll show you how to set them up uh, thanks for viewing if you made it this far please click like and so forth and subscribe if you're not already have a great day